So, I don't know when exactly I decided definitively to go into the startup world, but it's been about seven years. But I knew that uh, by the time I had applied for university, I knew that running a business was something I really wanted to do. So, I applied for business school, got in, only changed faculties like three months later. So, I switched out of business school to the humanities. But just as I switched out, what I did was actually I joined the organizing committee of this national business plan competition back in Singapore. So it's an entrepreneurial competition. So I joined it as a student lead. And that was where my entrepreneur exposure first started. Let me grab the slides. So my goal was to start my own business. And joining the competition as an organizing committee was something that my first, first step. So, but the thing is, even though I knew I had a goal, the road ahead in front of me was essentially unmapped. There was really uncharted territory. I had no idea, no experience. I didn't know what to do. So, one of the first things that I did was to realize that to get started on anything, one of the best ways is to really find mentors. Mentors are the best and easiest ways that I, I feel that they can guide you along. So what I did was that through, throughout my organizing committee experience, I actually met with and worked with many experienced people, people much older than me, much more experienced. And throughout that, that few years, I met a few key people that really changed my life, really made an impact on my life. So my first, one of the first few um, things that happened to me was that just barely six months after I joined the committee, um, this this uh, professor actually offered me a, a role in his in his class as a teaching assistant in the MBA course. So I was like, I jumped at opportunity. Like me, second year in university, I could be a teaching assistant in an MBA course. I looked at it as an opportunity to really learn. So even though I switched out of business school, it was ironic that in my second year I was going back to business school, but this time as a teaching assistant. But so so it was a great learning experience. I, I had to learn really fast because. It was like a theoretical um, course for me. For me, even though I was like, you know, doing the administration and stuff like that, I, do, I, I could sit in the classes and really learn from a student's point of view as well. So that was great. So that was one instance, one mentor of mine, my first mentor. Secondly, the second, second person I met uh, who really impacted my life was um, uh, this guy called Bernard, who later so one year later, we actually co-founded SGEntrepreneurs.com, which, which Edmund has mentioned. And so SGE, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a media entity that covers the Southeast Asian uh, entrepreneurship scene. And so up to today, we're like five and a half years old. So till today, um, Bernard and I are still running it together, and it's been great. So when I first started, like my first steps into the entrepreneurship world has led me to co-found SGE and it's still running today, like five and a half years later. To me, that's great. And that's one reason why I emphasize the importance of mentors. When you guys start out in your journey, I think it's important to really look around you, figure out who you want to learn from, what kind of skills uh, you want to acquire, and look for the mentors you think can best guide you along that path. So next is that, even though mentors are important, they can give you good advice, but ultimately what they cannot do is to walk your journey for you. Because when you start up, you realize that, you have to realize that you're on your own. You're essentially on your own. Like you see the little kids there? They can be your mentors, you know, your aunties, your uncles, your parents, good natured friends, you know, even random strangers. Um, they could be telling you, okay, um, you should go this way. No, you shouldn't do this. You should do that. But ultimately, you're the one who's going to be climbing that route. You're the one who's going to be putting your feet up against um, the other, your hand up, you know. It's, it's entirely you. So it's important that you realize that, that you cannot just take. What mentors are important, you cannot take all of what they say. This is a bit, it's a bit weird, but yeah. So, so okay, yeah, so that's Yao Ming, right? Chinese guy. So, so this, I'm linking it to rock climbing. And so in rock climbing, you know, okay, rather in human, in human nature, okay, all of us, we have tall people, there's short people, we have uh, people of different strengths, different flexibility. And rock climbing, that's very, very important. Because 
what uh, a route that someone, a, a taller person like this guy here, he, you can see he's reaching out, he's like super stretched, right? But a shorter person, imagine something like me, I wouldn't be able to do that, you know? I'll be like, oh, I cannot reach it. So I'll be like one foot away or something. So a route that this guy can climb, I may not be able to climb. And this is where I think it's very important in, in life in general and entrepreneurship, is that all of us have different strengths and weaknesses. All of us have different advantages, different disadvantages, we have different experiences, which leads, which makes us who we are today. And I think it's important here is that you have to find your own route. While you listen to mentors, you know, um, and you look at how other people have done it before, you try to be inspired by, by other entrepreneurs, but ultimately you have to really figure out um, what you can take from their lives to apply it to yours. Because you cannot apply it just blindly. It, it doesn't work that way. Because every one of us is different. And yeah, you can see that this woman, she's literally upside down. Can, can, you, can you see? So she's climbing her own route, you know? I, I really think that no one else has climbed upside down this way, but here she is, she's hanging on. And okay, I don't know what's the result of this, but presumably she went up. So an example that I, I feel is very iconic, you know, that we find different routes of getting away, getting a, a way around things. So for example, I mean, I, I, climb, I climb regularly and I climb with a whole bunch of people, um, guys, girls, you know, Smaller guys, smaller girls, bigger guys, bigger girls. And it's very normal when, let's say one of us are climbing, because we climb as a group, right? So we're all friends. And uh, my friend is climbing, then I'll be like, okay, yeah, um, why don't you put your feet up there? That's what I did earlier, your left foot up there. That's what I did earlier. It might work for you. I always say it might work for you, because she, she's stronger than me. She can do more pull-ups than I can, for example. So she might be able to pull herself up and wouldn't need to use that left foot. But for me, I need to use that foot. So, so I think it's very, um, it, it's a lesson that I really apply from that to life and in, in the startup, you know, the startup world, which is you, I, I try not to just blindly apply what I, I you know what I did to my friend or, or I don't blindly apply what they did to myself, my own route. Like when they tell me, okay, um, yeah, you should do this, they are like, no, 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 I, I went some like super, super weird, uh, late reaching out kind of route and it worked, you know, then like the whole world was surprised kind of thing, all my friends were surprised. So, it's, it's, it's always surprising and it's a shock in a sense, okay, surprise shock, I guess, not in a bad way, it's a good way, in that we all found different routes to get up. Even though when we climb, our goal is the same, you know, to reach up to the, this top ledge. But we, we climb differently. And it's amazing because you're looking at something that is done, in a sense, the same route, just, you know, that is done by different people in different ways. And the diversity is, is, is amazing. And I think in the startup world, it's exciting to me because diversity is there as well. And you see just different entrepreneurs who, who came from different backgrounds, um, different ec economic backgrounds, different um, education experiences, travel experiences, and it all lends to this whole diversity here, and you need to figure out where your strengths are, again. Yeah, okay, so one thing that's important here is that, okay, don't let um, what others say, you know, drown your own voice. Because, for example, so when I, when I was first few, you know, like, first few months, first few years of regular climbing, there were times I'd be like, okay, um, my friend's common link. Um, so I'll be climbing, she's my belay partner. So I'll be climbing, 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 I'll be stuck. So she's so much better than me because she, she, she used to train like really a lot when she was younger. So I'll be like, hey man, um, how do you get up from here to here? I'll be like, you know, I'll be like hanging on and she'll be like down there belaying me and I'll be like, how do you get to that towel, you know, that handhold, I can't reach it. So she'll tell me she did this, okay, then I'll try to do, I'll like literally hang there for 15 freaking minutes to try to do that. Then, you know, I get tired, because when you hold on, you get super tired. Then, okay, fine, then I relax a little bit, you know. I, maybe I go down or not, but... Then later on, I realized I shouldn't be trying what she... I shouldn't be blindly trying, get back to the earlier point. You know, and, and it's that I cannot let her voice drown mine, in the sense that I have to figure out for myself, stick a step back, and figure out, will that work for me? You know, and try things my own way. So, while I listen to her, absorb what she's saying, 
I process it, but I may not apply it. So I think that's very important. It's very important that um, you, you take a, you're able to take a step back. Because when you go into the startup world, you realize that you can be very overwhelmed with a lot of information. Um, in, in terms of startup literature, if you go to the internet, I'm sure a lot of you guys have, which is there are many different theories, different camps um, around, okay, you know, fundraising, you know, uh, or around finding advisors, finding co-founders, and there are many different theories, and you should, it is really great to read up the research, but ultimately you should be able to kind of figure out what, what you believe in, what applies to you. So I think that's very, very important.